Hi there, I'm Alex. I'm 19. I read Waitress Friday. I'm excited this month because um, I was like semi responsible. I'm in my second year of university technically, but last year is entirely virtual. And even though I still was like doing school and was doing work, it's a lot different when you're on campus because then, like, when I was at home, it's kind of when you're not at work or school, like, what else am I gonna do? Can't hang out with people because COVID. It's still COVID, but like, we're vaccinated, so we're hanging out with more people now. Um, which meant I read less. So, I read 30 books this month, which is 10,533 pages. Can you tell I have had to refilm that like five times? Um, and that averages out to about 351.1 pages a day, which is the second lowest it's ever been. I think the only time it was lower was during my exam season last year because I was not letting myself read, which is okay because I read a lot of good ones, especially because like I infiltrated the library system here. I've been to the library a lot, so it has like books that were on my TBR that I couldn't get from my old library that are at this library. I'm really excited. I'm excited to talk to you about stuff. Um, but since I didn't read a lot, I'm only going to be wrapping up the five best and the five worst books I read. Normally, I also do the 10th to 6th best book I read, but we didn't read a lot. And I don't have like really strong opinions on those ones. And I don't want to waste your time on things that I don't like genuinely care about too much. I'm also going to be talking about more statistics about what I read at the end of this video, because I know not everyone loves statistics, but if you want to stick around for that, you're welcome to stick around for that. So alternating between worst and best, there weren't a ton of books I hated this month, which is good. The worst rating I gave was a 6 out of 17. I rated 17 for absolutely no reason. I keep forgetting to say that in videos. I should probably say it more often. Um, and look, I just read books that weren't my style. I didn't read anything I really hate, so, which I probably shouldn't be telling you because you're not going to watch this video because it's going to be boring. But oh well, I'm a bad YouTuber. So the fifth worst book I read was Since We Were Friends, which is entirely my fault, has nothing to do with the book itself. I am simply not the target demographic, but let me read you the description so you understand how I accidentally read this book. I know I mention this in every video, but it needs to be said because it definitely influences like the way I read and review books. I like women, I don't like men, which means like straight guy girl romance where the only theme is the fact that it's a straight guy girl romance is not going to appeal to me because books like that are specifically written to be relatable to audiences and since I'm not the audience it's relatable to, I don't enjoy them. So I wouldn't like request an arc for a straight guy girl romance. But my problem is this book at the end of its description says, but meeting Sophie turns into a mind blower. For Regan's introduced to the strange world of girls she's been missing out on until now. So I was thinking that meant she's introduced to like romantically the world of girls and realizes that she has been by this whole time. And the last line is, in much to her dismay, she soon finds out what hurt most about losing her best friend was to be secretly in love with him. Um, so I was like, oh, she's bi and conflicted, but she's not. It literally just meant she's introduced to like, she has not had female friends before. Now she has female friends, which is perfectly fine for the book itself. But I did not enjoy that as a reader. It's not the type of book that's targeted to me. The fifth best book I read was Reclaim the Stars, which is an anthology. I love when I enjoy anthologies because I normally don't. Um, so basically, it is an anthology of Latin American authors who take kind of like romance stories and like romance tropes specifically in sci-fi and fantasy. I don't know, it says sci-fi and the title would have you think sci-fi, but some of them are definitely fantasy. Um, and they're just like with Latinx characters. Um, a lot of them are queer, so many of them are queer and I loved it. My favorite story was the opening story because it's sapphic, um, kind of like Romeo and Juliet, childhood enemies to friends to lovers to enemies, to who knows, you'll have to read it. Um, but I, I did enjoy the rest of them too. I just, that is my favorite trope. If you know more books in like long form of that trope, please let me know, I would die to read them. Okay, the fourth worst book we read was We Were the Wild Who Has, which is kind of my fault because I don't like sports. But also, I read so many sports books I enjoyed this year. This one's just not good, which sucks because it's also like feminist. And I was excited about it because it was feminist, not because it's a sports book, obviously. Um, and I think the issue here is it takes place over the span of either 48 hours or 24 hours, which I know does not necessitate or necessarily mean that a book's going to be very, very fast paced. But it, like if the description is trying to sell it to you as that and it calls it thrilling, the assumption is it's going to be very fast paced. But we have, I believe six or seven, I think six, I'm remembering correctly, POV characters. We spend the first like more than half of this just being introduced to all of our POV characters with like nothing happening. Then the plot starts to pick up and I, Enjoy what the plot was trying to do, I just do not think it was well executed. Next we have Allies, which is actually also kind of an anthology. It's a non-fiction anthology though, just all about like allyship 
and just how to be a good ally like to multiple different communities. It's a series of essays and I know when I say essays it'll freak some people out. It's very very like personable like it feels like the writer is talking to you and addressing you personally. They're very casual essays which to me is better because I am an English major and I don't want to read like very smart formally worded things. Not that these aren't smart they're just not formally worded which was wonderful because I hate old like I love my degree, I love my major, I have read so much Old English in the last few days, and I am very okay with reading things that are easy for my brain to process. Um, yeah, but it's so good. I think that it's very approachable, which, like I know I've already said, which is wonderful. It's also, like, it really, there's so much intersectionality in this book, and every single writer is kind of aware of their own specific privileges and their own disadvantages when they're writing, like, they're not saying there's an end-all be-all way to be a good ally. They talk about how complicated it is, and I don't know, it was like a very honest, thought-provoking read. I love it, and everyone can read it because everyone in their life can be an ally to someone else because while you might be like in an oppressed group in one way you're definitely not in every single possible way you know there's different forms of oppression and different forms of being an ally. I got an arc of that I'll put the release date on screen if it's not out yet I'll do the same for any other arcs that I'm talking about liking. I don't generally do it for arcs that I did not like because I don't think that you would look at my review of it and be like oh I want to read that. Next up we have the other misses um, which I was quite excited for. I thought it'd be a fun spooky read. I went out and read it late at night and had to run home because I thought I was going to get killed. Um, but it wasn't good. I didn't like the narration at all. Like it, it has multiple POVs and the main POV is the really, really like annoying one. She makes so many dumb decisions despite the book like constantly reminding you that she's a doctor and she's every single time she interacts with someone, she's like, by the way, you can call me doctor because I'm a doctor and I'm smart. It gets so grating. Um, the plot twists were just it's just kind of every single mystery thriller trope in one book. Um, I don't like how it talks about mental health. I think a lot of mental health things in there were either stereotypes or just downright lies, which makes no sense because at the end too, the author like talks about how she, re I can't say what the mental health thing is that's spoiling it, but it's a mystery thriller with multiple POVs. You probably know what the mental health thing is. Um, yeah, the author talks about how like she researched it. And I don't think she did. I don't know. I don't, if she did, I think she was, just looking for things that supported the way she wanted her book to go. Especially like it's fine for the characters themselves because we're inside their heads to have misconceptions about mental health, but she talks like medical professionals who also were saying things- I don't know, it was weird. I didn't like the plot twist, I didn't like anything before the plot twist, but I feel like the only reason you like it is if you enjoyed the plot twist because it kind of builds up to that and nothing happens beforehand. It just wasn't good. Third best book I read was Conan Garrity. It is historical fiction. I hate historical fiction. Um, so if you also hate historical fiction, you should read this one. Also, also, I can't tell you anything about it because <laughs> like literally even like saying character name would be a spoiler because there's just so many plot twists, but not like, you know, like, oh, we got you the plot twist. Like, an, oh, do you want to cry about this plot twist way? And it's very good. Like if you're looking for a way to get into like why it is it technically why I, I don't think it's technically why but I think I got it from the YA section at the library. So I'm not sure. But if you're looking for that kind of thing and you're not very much into historical fiction, definitely suggest this one. The second worst book I read was Poison Study by Marissa? Maria? One of those names. I forget if there's an S in it. V. Snyder. Um, and I loved the author. I don't remember her name. I probably should have looked it up. But again, we're a bad YouTuber. Um, I loved her so much in like middle school because her A Touch of Power is I believe what it's called, the Healer trilogy books, um, were like the first adult fantasy I read because I feel like because they have a lot of YA fantasy tropes, they're shelved as YA. So me as a middle grader who was reading YA, I ended up reading that somehow and it made me feel super cool. But I was already very hesitant going into this because I know with that series, the I forget if it's the second book or the beginning of the third book because I know I didn't finish the third book in that series despite the fact that I bought it from my library because I love the first one so much, just like throws in a bunch of like plot holes for the sake of romance. Like, and, and it does a lot of like, oh, the characters can be resurrected, but only in sp like, I, don't, I hate resurrection in books. I'm sorry, it ruins all the stakes unless you set it up very, very well. Um, yeah, but there's just a lot of plot holes for the sake of the romantic lead being a romantic lead. Um, and in this one, I didn't catch any plot holes, but I haven't read the rest of them, so who knows? Um, the writing is very, I don't even, this is gonna sound mean. I feel, and I, I did, I do enjoy the author's writing. I enjoyed it when I was in middle school. Um, Loki feels like she has a source with her half the time because the writing is very like approachable 
90% of the time and then our character will randomly like whip out like a big word that it doesn't like doesn't fit in with the sentence as if you know the tone of the people she's talking to I don't know it's weird I didn't I wasn't a huge fan of the narration but other than like that one specific thing about it it was very standard I'd say YA fantasy narration but I forget if this one's actually YA I should pay attention to the character ages I forget this one's actually YA or like the characters are in their 20s or not um and I hated the love interest but caveat to that were I to have read this when I originally wanted to, when I was in middle school, I would have loved the love interest. He is a controlling, dark, probably tall and brunette, I forget what color his hair is, man. Um, and I understand that there is a very large market of people who enjoy reading about love interests like that. I, don't, I also hated Ryzen from Akator, so if you like Ryzen from Akator, give it a shot. I don't know. Also, I'm aware it's recent, but we are ignoring the fact it's recent because that's stupid and I hate it. Okay, second we have Summer of Salt, which I was gonna read like a few- if you're one of my TAs, no you're not. I was gonna read like a little bit of it and then work on a paper and then I just read the whole thing while sitting by the water and drinking my coffee and I felt like the main character, especially like given like there's a title there, like the cover page, the vibes the vibes were immaculate it's so good it's urban fantasy i love would it be urban fantasy magic realism is how actually what i think it technically is and i love magic realism um it's so like the magic is all metaphor magic i'm a huge fan of metaphor magic i can't say a lot that's burning the fox a lot it's really a mystery like i don't know if it's shelved as i do because i probably have in front of me whatever it's shelved as because i have it in my spreadsheet I'm not sure though if it was shelved as contemporary because most of it's contemporary just with like that one magic element um, fantasy or if it was shelved as mystery because it could have easily fallen into any of those three categories um, and it's really good. It's sibling focused. Our lead is like just casually queer and that's it's not the focus of the story but she does like women which was a fun surprise. I always love it when I'm like surprise sapphic. Yeah, I don't know if you like just kind of like cozy. It's also, I was gonna say cozy. It has some dark stuff in it. It is a feminist piece. It is a there. I don't want to spoil the thing that makes it a feminist piece, or not that makes it, but like that it centers around from a feminist lens. But like, please, my Instagram's below. Message me if you want to know what it is, because it is it is like the plot just of the book, so I can't say it but also it's like a very big trigger. Okay, and then the worst book I read this month, and again, I want to remind you, I did not hate any of the books I read this month, I gave it two stars, um, was The Grove, which is a horse girl book. <laughs> this is genuinely the best way for me to describe it. And I think, honestly, with a few line changes, The Grove could have been a very good middle grade, maybe even younger, maybe like kids lit, but like the type of kids lit where the characters are 12 but it's not classified as middle grade in libraries because they know the people who are going to enjoy it are like eight and nine year old girls. That kind of book. Um, and I feel really bad also because like more than anything I talk negatively about, I have a feeling that this author like put their heart and soul into this and that this truly was like a really big passion project for them. <laughs> Um, and it reads like a debut, and I don't think it's her debut. I'm not sure if it's her debut in this genre because I haven't read anything else she's written. But the writing and like mainly the dialogue, dialogue is the biggest giveaway for stuff like this, is very stilted and unrealistic. I say as a hypocrite who can't write dialogue, but it is. It's very, very stilted. But the biggest problem for me is that our character is 17, and no, she's not. Like I said, she acts like she's the protagonist in like a kid's lit book. Um, the way she expresses herself is as if she's the protagonist in a kid's lit book. And it's really weird when you have that and you pair it with like, because this is a paranormal romance where you're like, on one hand, kid's lit. On the other hand, like, Twilight and like, hush hush and you know, you know, like those kinds of things. I'm not sure where the target audience for this would be because in my brain those are two very uncompatible things but I truly hope like it gets rewritten and reworked and does find its target audience because I do think like you can tell that there was so much heart put into this. I feel so mean. I'm being nicer than normal because I didn't read anything bad. And I feel mean because I normally don't have to talk about the books that I read that were just like, eh, just slightly not okay. You know, like I'm fine ranting about something I hated, but I didn't hate any of these. They were just like, not good. <laughs> 
Anyways, um, moving on from me feeling like a bad person, we are going to very, very, very briefly talk about statistics because I have someone coming over soon and I'm going to like a dinner thing because I socialize now, which is really wild and weird. Just kidding, we're not doing that. It's early, so my voice sounds like crap. I was about to publish this and realized I forgot to film about my favorite book. And the favorite book I read last month was The Bronzed Beasts. It's the third book in the Gilded Wolves trilogy, which is one of my favorite trilogies and my favorite conclusions to a trilogy. I don't want to say a lot because like spoilers, that's the third book, so you can barely talk about anything. But I will say, it's putting it on so well. Like, the last book in trilogies normally sucks, and this one doesn't. Everything ends in a way that just makes so much sense. And I love it, and if you know more series or books like it, please let me know. So first off, on screen right now is a distribution of the genres I read. I get the genres by looking at the first tag on Goodreads, excluding tags that say romance or LGBTQ, because LGBTQ books are not their own genre. I read a lot of them, it was my graphs, and I found that romance tends to like if it's straight romance, it shelters romance than contemporary, but if it's queer romance, it shelters contemporary and then romance, and it would ruin my graph and skew it. So it's not in there. Um, also, I have finally combined mystery, thriller, and horror into one category because a lot of things just willy-nilly have one of those at the top. Like every horror is also shelled as thriller and it just depends on how many people decided to label their shelf that way. So I just, they're all one category because most of the mysteries I read are thrillers. Most of the horror books I read are thrillers. It's really just a thriller category. I'm not a cozy mystery person. I'd like to be. If you've read any good cozy mysteries, please let me know because I haven't, I've read like two. Um, I haven't really read any, so I feel like I can't say I'm not a cozy mystery person. Anywho, so this month I read the most contemporary books, I always read the most contemporary books, followed by fantasy, which it always is. Notably, I read one graphic novel. My goal last year was to read more graphic novels, and I was doing so well, because I was reading one book in a series every Saturday. Today's Saturday, when I'm filming this. Um, I think I'm going to read, because the library that now is online library has the newest Lumberjanes book, so I'm going to read that. But most of the time, since I'm not reading a series right now, I have nothing to read and I get to graphic novel Saturdays, so I don't read any. And it's upsetting, because I don't want to stop being into them, because I was so proud of myself for getting into them. I do, the person who's coming over today is into graphic novels, so I'm going to bother her until she tells me every single one she likes, but I think she's also just getting into them, so we'll see how that goes. Really the only things this next statistics section is going to be useful for is um, contemporary and fantasy, because I didn't read enough of any other genre to get averages, but I do still want to briefly go over them just because I want, to, like I did it because I have to put it in my overall graph at the end of the year, and it took me time to put the statistics together, so you have to see it. So my highest rated genre this month is nonfiction. I read two or one nonfiction book I already forgot. You won't have forgotten though, because you would have just seen it. So that doesn't say a lot, but I do find I tend to rate nonfiction very, I'm looking at last month and I rated nonfiction very lowly, but most of the time I tend to rate it very highly, despite the fact that I don't read a lot of nonfiction, so you have nonfiction recommendations for me, specifically ones that don't use big words because I'm very burnt out on big words. Please let me know. I'm realizing now that it's a blatant lie because historical fiction has a higher rating, which is another genre I don't read a lot about because like I said, I don't like historical fiction, but I secretly do because I feel like the last four or five months I've been saying I don't and then giving it like a ludicrously high rating. So maybe I should start reading historical fiction. Everything else is like kind of an average rating. Fantasy has a 10.67, which is higher than it normally is because since I normally read a lot of fantasy, it's normally like right around like 8.59 territory because you're gonna read some bad ones and some good ones. So we're happy about that. I read good fantasies this month. I'm gonna move out of the statistics section because there's not a lot to talk about here. Um, I gave an average overall rating this month of 10.2, which is pretty high. Um, last month my average rating was 9.5, so it's like significantly better than last month, but then the month before that it was 10.4, so it's not like the highest it's ever been. But that's still pretty good, because most of the time it's like 10.1 to 9.8-ish was where I'd say like the average range was. So slightly above average. Um, sorry or you're welcome i don't know for this video being shorter than normal because i didn't read a lot i will update y'all next week with something i have no idea what i'm gonna film yet but i'm home next week so i'll be filming at home um which means we're changing locations yet again i keep forgetting to do this because i'm a bad youtuber which i've said like five times this video because i'm overcompensating um like subscribe comment please i crave attention i'm a narcissist goodbye